This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at Oculus Connect. Joining us, of course, is none other than Palmer Lucky. Always good to, to see you, Palmer. Good seeing you too. C congratulations, happy birthday. Congratulations on your continued success. Thank you must you. be you must be like thrilled with this event. I mean, it did it turn out the way you expected? I expected it to go worse, so it's going good, which is nice. Well, I had, uh, of course, I just tried Crescent Bay, which is the new, I wouldn't call it a developer's kit, obviously it's a prototype, yes? Yep. Correct. So what, how, how is it, I, I've seen it, so I, is, I think it's better that you tell us, how, how is it improved over DK2? Higher resolution, higher frame rate, lighter, better ergonomics, 360 degree tracking, wider tracking volume, higher resolution, better optics. Now, forgive, forgive my ignorance, 360 degree tracking, uh, I take it DK2 did not have that benefit? Uh, not really. The, the DK2 was very close to it because the LEDs uh, had an angle that pointed almost completely backwards, so you could actually look straight away, and if you didn't have much hair, it would often see enough LEDs to track you. But this has LEDs on the back of the head as well, so that allows us to fully seamlessly track, even as you do a 360 degree uh, spin. So it, it all allows you to be tracked no matter what, what you do. Now, has, has Oculus's uh, p position changed on whether they're pushing a standing or a seated experience? No, the Oculus Rift is still a seated experience. Because what I saw was, you know, standing and sure. walking. But that's a developer conference where you signed a health and safety waiver at the front door. Okay. So, but for consumers, you're you're still pushing the seated experience. Yeah, what I what I saw, what I experienced, of course, was far more dramatic than what I had seen earlier. I mean, walking in environment, not just walking, but actually standing on a ledge. Uh, I mean, you obviously were. Not you personally, but Oculus has obviously been pushing these dramatic messages through VR. Are we going to continue to see that? Are we still seeing that encouraged when with the full release product? Absolutely. So it's uh, I, 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 it's just it struck me as odd that you know we're going to have that seated position, but still looking over at ledges. That's well, what were, that's what caught me off guard. These are just demos that we made for for the show. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So, and let's talk a little bit about, about Gear VR. Sure. I mean, this was very impressive. I mean, it, and it, it's not just that the VR itself was impressive, but mobile application, you know, I thought it was going to be full of latency, not so much. It actually was, it, it was quite good. Um, can you elaborate a little bit as to what you had to do to make Gear VR a reality? And by the way, this is more, I guess this is Samsung's credit as much sure. as it is Oculus. This would maybe you could fill, shed some light on that. We worked together with Samsung a lot on the hardware and the software. A lot of the software stuff is ours. John Carmack worked on it. The sensor that they're using is based on our DK1 sensor, but improved actually quite a bit from DK1. Um, it's basically the only good mobile virtual reality headset right now. And it's because we were able to get very low level hardware access, not only to the sensor, but to the rest of the phone and able to bypass a lot of the problems that Android has with rendering. So unless you can have really deep hardware access, it's impossible to solve a lot of these problems. Um, now, what I gather is it's not positional tracking. I take it it's orientational uh, tracking, similar to DK1? Currently, yes. Wonderful. Now, Samsung is Oculus's uh, first partner, I take it, in this technology. Is, is it something that you see Oculus licensing out to different vendors? Do you, do you think it's going to be 100% Samsung moving forward? A any plans with this? I think in the long run, we'll, you know, we want to make our technology available to more people, but right now we're focused entirely on Samsung. Couple in our own product. Of, of course, of course. So a couple months ago, I read an article. I, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't recall exactly where, but Oculus remarked that they were looking to potentially license their technology. Sure. So when Oculus is talking about licensing their technology, what are they referring to? I mean, are we talking hardware, software, or a little of each? We really don't have any solid plans on it. It's more like a long-term, you know, a long-term goal would be to be kind of like the Android of virtual reality, where uh, we're able to help a lot of people not have to solve the same problems over and over again where they can use a lot of our a lot of our components. Uh, the Samsung deal is unique in that we really got low level access to their hardware and to their phone and provided them with uh, software and hardware designs. But uh, but you know we'll see how it how it goes with with other people in the future. Samsung is really like if you're going to partner with a mobile phone company, they're by far the best one to be working with. Wonderful. Have you been keeping track on uh, ray tracing technologies, I wonder? Do you have any thoughts on that? No thoughts.
Okay. I mean, I'm, it's not my it's not my field of expertise. Okay. One of the big news stories this week was about Nvidia's work. I mean, they're you know, you've heard it. I'm sure you've heard it all day. Everybody's talking about latency, 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 and how how little we want of of latency. And uh, my understanding is with their new uh, Maxwell GPUs or their GTX 980 series, they're doing a lot of optimizations to reduce that latency to bare, to bare minimum. Can you comment at all on, on in, NVIDIA's work? NVIDIA is really the better one to talk to, but we've been collaborating with them for a long time. Uh, it's really good to see a lot of the work finally making it out there. A lot of it is Maxwell specific, but, uh, but many of those features are actually part of our SDK and we'll, they work on all cards. Wonderful. The, um, now, I, I know this is a little bit of a tough question, um, uh, but I was surprised that not only did NVIDIA promote, let's say, their reduced latency, but there, there is also discussion with their drivers, that they do these 3D vision drivers for, for 3D. Sure. Um, the, the, you know, d does Oculus have a reaction to that, or as to you know, the 3D drivers from NVIDIA pertaining to VR? It'll be interesting to see, but I mean, they haven't... It, it's not currently like a functioning, working thing, in terms of you know being something that people would actually want to use. So it'll be interesting to see, but we're we think it's going to be a pretty terrible experience. No, okay. So the 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 other question I had was, okay, well maybe we love, it, we love Nvidia and we work with them, but we disagree on some things, and this is one of the cases where. We think it's cool that they're trying to take their 3D vision library and convert it to VR, but we also don't think it's going to provide very many, if any, good VR experiences. And, and I should underscore, this isn't unique to NVIDIA. This, you're, you're speaking right across the gamut of all the different solutions, yes? Well, I mean, their particular solution is only for 3D vision games. Um, but generally, generally speaking, that's that that's generally the case. If the developer isn't 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 integrating things and isn't being able to do things like reducing latency in the game's engine itself or integrating time warp, uh, it's never going to be nearly as good of an experience as it could be if native. Okay, excellent, excellent. So one of the things that. I consistently see, and I, actually it was, it was great to see you at TIFF in Toronto as, as well, is that when you're, you or Oculus has posed the question as to, you know, what's the biggest concern with content? Not making people sick. Uh, is that a, an accurate, uh, what, am I hearing correctly, is that the number one priority right now? I mean, it's not really necessarily a priority. We know a lot about how not to do it. So it's not, it's not that this is a priority for us as much as it's good basic VR game design common sense. Uh, so it's, it's important to make games that people are comfortable in. So one of the things that like I walked away with, I was really impressed with with with, uh, cre with uh, cre excuse me, uh, cre crescent, crescent base, excuse me, forgive me. It was just, I mean, you're walking in these environments. I mean, you see dinosaurs, you're, you're seeing ledges like Micah Brash does this wonderful explanation is that when you see a ledge in VR and you have that presence experience, you know, you, you really are concerned about walking over that ledge. And sure. for the first time, I had that experience. Like, That's I good. was really, I was really uh, impressed. Have you, um, I mean, within the Oculus camp, obviously these are, you know, we're going to see all kinds of content, you know? And I, I would almost describe it as gunpowder. You could either have fireworks or you could do it for other things. Because this obviously, I really think this is going to be impacting people. Has Oculus put some thought into, you know, any responsibilities with content or any recommendations on, on, you know, content directions that they'd like to see versus not seeing? I mean, we already curate share, so there's a lot of things we don't allow on share, and like jump scares we generally discourage, but, I mean, we can't, things that we don't like will always exist, that is inevitable. So, you know, we can't, we can't really take responsibility for everything that anyone does in virtual reality. All we can do is try to suggest to them the right places to go. So Crescent Bay, obviously, I mean, we were talking very successful with presence, higher resolution. You know, one of, one of the big things that I heard about today was audio. I, I, ironically, I'm using heard about today, but audio, sure. that you've added headphones to the, to the, uh, to the device. Why was this important? It was important because it allows us to have a high quality virtual reality 
a high quality audio experience that was optimized for virtual reality available for every user. So rather than trying to make audio software that works across a wide variety of different headphones that are all terrible in different ways, we know that every single user has high quality headphones, high quality amplifier, high quality digital to analog converter. So is this, is this the case where like, Oculus wants to go into the directional audio business as well, or are you just providing the headphones and leaving the software to, to an external supplier? What, where, what's Oculus' stake in we, this? We had a talk yesterday about this. It's being integrated into our SDK. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, well, thanks, Palmer. So again, every you know, every time I come here, much better. So anyway, thanks for joining us on. <laughs> you know, what is it about us 3D guys? We always have to go like this. <laughs> yep. Thanks for joining us, Palmer. Thank you. This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at Oculus Connect. Thanks for watching. All right, awesome. So